Greetings, soldiers. At ease. Well, on this week's Closer Look, we're going to be checking out G.I. Joe, specifically the 80s and 90s series, and some very specific releases of them, namely... The G.I. Joe Foot Locker set. Yes, this is the complete Marvel Sunbow series in one massively awesome box set. I've been wanting to do a look at this one for a very long time. Well, I guess about six years since it originally came out. Yeah, I think it's long overdue, so we're going to rectify that today. We're also going to take a look at the Blu-ray release of the 1987 animated movie. And we'll take a look... A Shell Factory's release of the Deke series, which in many ways is a direct continuation of the uh, the um, original Marvel Sunbow series. And just to be complete, we'll throw G.I. Joe Resolute into the mix and also check out the remains of my G.I. Joe VHS collection. Ah, all today on A Closer Look on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Alrighty, so uh, I guess just as a brief little bit of history, how did I get into G.I. Joe? Well, the first I remember seeing the show was when I was, or even hearing about it actually really, was when I was playing at a friend's place after school one day. And uh, he had some of the toys and showed them to me and I thought they were pretty cool. And I don't remember which ones he had. It was, you know, I think I, that was the only time I ever went over to his place. But, uh, Anyway, he told me that there was a cartoon based on it as well, so it just so happened that uh, it was on that day, and he wanted to uh, you know, take a break from our playing so he could watch that day's episode. Now, this was 1983. This was when the original miniseries, the five-part miniseries that has since become known as The Mass Device, first aired. So I think it was like part three. It was like right in the middle of it. And I never ended up seeing the rest of it at the time. It wasn't until quite a ways later when it was in uh, in amongst the daily repeats that I finally got to see the rest of the miniseries. But I remember first seeing it and thinking, wow, this is, this is different from any other cartoon I've ever seen. I mean, prior to that, I'm sure I'd seen a few action-adventure cartoons, but they were more sort of the Saturday morning type, which were a lot lighter, you know, things like... Um, you know, Black Star, and of course uh, the '60s Spider-Man series and whatnot had a very different look and feel. Uh, but this GI Joe series looked completely different from anything I'd ever seen before. I mean, the explosions were really spectacular. The action was really intense. The human drama was very genuine, uh, at least you know to an 11-year-old boy. And yeah, it just blew me away. So the following year, 1984, when the sequel miniseries, The Revenge of Cobra, came out. Um, I made sure to catch it that time, and I thought it was just fantastic. I actually liked the second one a lot better than the first one. And then the following year, 1985, they actually premiered the five-part miniseries that opened the, the regular daily series in primetime as a movie. And I don't know if they did this everywhere, but they did it in my area. So they showed all five parts edited together as a primetime movie. And again, I didn't see all of it during the movie presentation, but I did catch up with it on the uh, daily repeats later. So now G.I. Joe was a regular series and factoring the two original miniseries in we had 55 new episodes of G.I. Joe put into daily syndication so a total of 65 episodes and then finally the following year 1986 we of course had season two which began with another five-part miniseries Arise Serpentor Arise and then finally in 1987 the final bow of the Marvel Sunbow series was the movie. Now, the movie was originally supposed to be shown theatrically, but it wasn't. It was actually decided kind of at the zero hour not to show it theatrically, A, because Transformers and My Little Pony, the movie, had both done so poorly at the box office, and B, uh, a few changes were made to G.I. Joe the movie at the last minute because of the reaction to character deaths in the Transformers movie. In particular, in G.I. Joe the movie, Duke was actually supposed to die. You can hear about this on the commentary on the uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, Buzz Dixon talks about it quite a bit, and he says uh, that was changed at the last minute because of the backlash from all the character deaths in Transformers the movie. They didn't want to traumatize any more kids, so they softened that and had it. He went into a coma rather than dying. But he said, watch that scene 
without the audio because the the sort of retcon of his death was done in in just post production dialogue. They added a couple lines of dialogue to gloss it over. But he said, "Watch it without the sound. It is very clear the Duke dies in that scene." So fast forward a couple of years later, uh, Sunbow is and Marvel are no longer producing the show, and Deke picks it up. One of the other eight giants of '80s cartoons, and they did two more seasons of 44 episodes total, beginning with the five another five-part miniseries, Operation Dragonfire. And Operation Dragonfire actually continued on direct, pretty directly from the events of G.I. Joe the movie. And uh, there you go. And that's that pretty much uh, wrapped up the 80s and 90s series, with one exception. We did, of course, get G.I. Joe Resolute uh, just a couple years ago, which was kind of a spiritual successor to the 80s series and uh, very much meant for folks like us who had had grown up with it. So without any further ado, let us take a closer look at my G.I. Joe collection here and we'll we'll talk a little bit about some of the other releases and in particular with the Foot Locker set I want to talk about the extras because there are a few extras much like the Transformers Matrix set there are a few extras that are actually exclusive to that version of the set that you can't get in any other version of the G.I. Joe collection. Alrighty, let's go down to the, the old black box and check out all my G.I. Joe stuff. Alright, and once again, the microphone box creeps in a little closer. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't remember how I set it up that first time they kept it out of the picture. Anyway, let's start with the VHS collection, shall we? Uh, much like with Transformers, Family Home Entertainment also picked up the license for G.I. Joe and put out a whole bunch of volumes in the old big box format, so... Here's Volume 2, The Revenge of Cobra. And much like the other big boxes, it has a little comic strip on the back. How cool is that? So this is all, uh, all five parts of The Revenge of Cobra edited together into a movie-style presentation. That's just how Family Home Entertainment rolled. If we take a look inside... I'm not going to bother showing you the inside of all of these because we basically just have a big plain clamshell case which is exactly the size of the big boxes. So if you're wondering what the size of the big boxes is, it's the size of a typical clamshell case just with a cardboard box around it. And, oh, we're upside down. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Let's go this way. There we go. And it was the same with the Transformers. We would have these cool silver labels on them. And this one in particular also has a silver label on the front which most volumes did not have. Most of them would just have have it on the, I guess, you know, cost-cutting measure. Let's cut out the front label. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, they would put it on, on there. And as you can see, I have nicely rewound it because I'm, I'm kind that way. I'm kind. I rewind. I guess I'm just being kind to myself because it's, it's mine. But, yeah, so it just slides into the box there and a little, little flap. This one was actually an X-Rental. So I did not get this one new, but uh, pretty nice shape, actually. Uh, a lot of the rentals would, of course, have, see, you know, as G.I. Joe 2. Uh, a lot of the rentals would, of course, have stickers all over them. But I guess, I don't know if I removed the stickers. I must have removed the stickers. I can't imagine there was no stickers on there. And then I also have uh, Volume 5 there, which is a single episode tape, Cobra's Creatures. And there we go. A lot of detail in this, actually. Like, this is phenomenally detailed for one of these covers. Uh, all the insects and stuff there. And then once again, of course, we have a comic strip on the back. Now, I used to have more volumes of this, but uh, I sold them a while back. I don't know why specifically. I think it's because I was more enamored with Transformers. So I kept all the Transformers ones, but sold all the G.I. Joe ones. And then uh, Family Home Entertainment did re-releases in standard uh, sort of boxes of a bunch of the G.I. Joe volumes. This is this is the re-release of the Mass Device, the original miniseries. It has all the same cover art on it. It's just been reduced to a standard VHS uh, box size. And there we go. So a little comic strip on the back there as well. And uh, barcode. And there we go. And then, of course, this one was unnumbered because at the time it originally came out, I guess it was the only release. And then fast forward, and that's all I have of the Family Home Entertainment ones. Um, I'm probably not going to bother getting them again, uh, just because, you know, they're big and bulky and stuff. And as I say, I was always more of a Transformers fan anyway. But I just thought I'd show those to you out of, for fun. And then a few years later, uh, Rhino, of course, picked up the license for, uh, for G.I. Joe. And we have several uh, two-episode volumes 
of stories. This is actually a pretty, pretty nice painted cover. I think it's some of the, the toy art or something. But anyway, so this is volume one. This is completely random. This is Worlds Without End, which is uh, actually one of my favorite stories from season one of the uh, the regular series. It's a two-part story. It takes place in an alternate dimension in which uh, Cobra has actually taken over the world. And the Joes, uh, a lot of them are dead, and uh, the few surviving Joes have formed sort of a... A band, small band of freedom fighters trying to uh, save the world from Cobra. And uh, really good stuff. But uh, in this case, we have... Oh, look at that. G.I. Joe Collector's Club card. Very cool. These ones I, all bu I bought all new. And there we go. So just plain white label. Uh, very arbitrary, the, the order and the numbering. I should mention also that this one, with the re-releases, they had just plain white labels on them and such but once again edited into movie form now in the in the case of the rhino videos they didn't edit them at all they just left them uncut and uh you know have the full opening and closing titles intact and there we go one thing i should mention that was always a problem with the earlier uh video releases and i think the rhino ones suffer from this as well is a lot of the season one episodes actually have the opening title sequence from the original mini series of gi joe rather than from the actual season one title sequence so that's kind of annoying so here we just have two random uh episodes from season two it's funny this is volume three and we're already on to season two episodes <clears throat> we have my favorite things and into your tent i will silently creep that is such a creepy title <laughs> but there you go so pretty cool just look at the spine there yeah and then finally i have this one two-part story entitled the traitor which uh features dusty pretty pretty heavily in this one this is another really good one actually i found the two-part stories generally were really good overall in uh, gi joe and a lot of my favorite stories were the uh the two parters and there we go this is volume eight yeah once again i used to have more volumes of this but uh don't anymore all right now the one you've been waiting for i am gonna have to move the camera up a bit because there is a lot to go into here bear with me for just a moment all right so this of course is the gi joe Foot Locker set. Now it originally came with this cardboard uh, folding thing. I'll show you how it goes. It basically goes on the bottom. So the front gives you the G.I. Joe logo and then of course on the bottom you have all of the well now it doesn't list all of the contents but it lists a good chunk of them. Gives you an idea. You know, a little look at the inside and, and whatnot. So very nice. Very nice indeed. Alright, so let's open this bad boy up. Here we go. First thing we do, nice sturdy uh, latch there. Open it up and we have this cool G.I. Joe control panel. All kinds of details there. None of this is animated or lenticular or anything, it's just drawings. But it's all it's all bumpy, so it's like you actually have some kind of, I don't know, G.I. Joe device of some kind. Now we just stick a finger in here, pull on this, and look at that. And the whole thing opens up. I can't even get it all in the... Here, I'll just turn it around this way so you can see. So underneath the control panel here, you can see we have this these pockets that have the, uh, the discs in them there. So in two uh, books, I'll, I'll show you those in just a moment. And then inside, we have a dog tag. Pretty cool. This is actually a USB stick, one gigabyte in size, nothing on the back, G.I. Joe logo on the front. Um, and what this has on it is a couple of G.I. Joe silent comics. You know, uh, any fans of the comics will remember the, the silent issues, the ones that had no words, they were just all artwork, usually involving snake eyes in some way. So this one has a couple of uh, more recent ones, very cool. And then, of course, we have, uh, I'll look at that in a sec, we have a booklet, which I'll go through in just a moment. And then we have a couple of inserts here. There, of course, the uh, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, the first movie, was just coming out. So you get some uh, stuff about that and uh, ads for the comics. You got some uh, iron-on tattoos. Very cool. There we go. Basically just uh, temporary tattoos. 
Uh, we got the Snake Eyes one there, the Cobra logo, and the G.I. Joe logo, of course. And there we go. <clears throat> so very cool. And this is just a little blurb about the, uh, the dog tag and, of course, a little ad for the Transformers Matrix set. If you'd like to see my thoughts on that, I did an epic five-part review of it. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the discs first. So we just slide these out. Ah, try to slide them out. It's kind of an awkward angle here. So we got this, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then the other one. I should mention, <clears throat> just as an aside here, when I originally got this, the uh, uh, the the pocket here was actually the glue had come off one one side of it, and it was kind of hanging down. So I kept having to adjust it. I've since fixed it with Gorilla Glue. Um, and then over time, all of the glue came off, and the this pocket just kind of fell off. So I used some good old Gorilla Glue, and now it's nice and sturdy again. In fact, it's probably sturdier than it's ever been before. So you can't even tell. I mean, this is good as new because, you know, I'm good that way. I, I fix things good. So, all right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put... Uh, put the ads back in here because we don't really need them per se. There we go. I, I put the tattoos in between the two things just to kind of protect them. And there we go. Okay, so we'll close that up. And there we go. And it does have two little, uh, I don't know what you can see. Yeah, two little ribbons there. Just going to hold it. It's nice and sturdy. And they just fold inward like that. Kind of automatically too, actually. Never really, I've never had to fiddle with them. So the uh, this is clear plastic here. You put it down, and then the logo shows through the top. Very nice. And this is a really nice sturdy box. Beware of Chinese bootleg versions that are nowhere near as nice. There's a Chinese bootleg version floating around out there that's all just cardboard. This is actually metal around the trim. Like this is actually metal. And then this is like cardboard and I mean it feels like a good proper footlocker. And then good sturdy hinges on the back as well. So really, really well constructed uh, box here and sure to delight any G.I. Joe fan. Okay, so let's just set this aside here. Take a look at the actual discs. So the disc uh, boxes here, you can see, are kind of themed. This is G.I. Joe headquarters. This is the Co well, one of the Cobra temples. Uh, so the first uh, nine discs feature the Joes. Uh, discs 10 through 17 feature the Cobras. But wait a minute, that's an uneven number of discs. Why are the two things exactly the same size? Should this not be slightly shorter than this? Well, we'll uh, answer that question as to why they're the same height in just a moment. So let's take a look here. So this just opens up like this. And it's basically a stack of trays here. And there's a piece of heavy-duty tape on the spine holding them all together. Haven't had any problems with it yet. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. So what we have here, disc one, has the original miniseries, the mass device. Disc 2 has the Revenge of Cobra. Disc 3 has the Pyramids of Darkness. So extras on this, uh, these are the same as on the Season 1.1 set. We've got uh, Looking Back with writer Ron Friedman, because Ron Friedman actually wrote all three of the miniseries. So they have a nice little retrospective uh, conversation with him over the course of those three discs. So it's quite cool. And then Disc 4 we get into uh, the first of the regular episodes, so starting with episode 16. And then we got this one, which has episodes 23 through 29. Is that right? Yeah, 23 through 29. And then 30 to 38. And, oh, what the hell is happening there? What is going on there? Hold on a second. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> As I destroy the set before your very eyes. Um, 37 to 43. And, oh, and this is a bonus features disc. Disc 8, bonus features. I should mention also there are bonus features on disc 4. Disc 4 has uh, a 1963 G.I. Joe Toy Fair presentation. Uh, basically premiering the toys. I believe they actually debuted in 1964, but uh, 1963 is when they sort of gave a preview look at them. Uh, now, this would have been the original, like, 
13 and a half inch or 12 inch whatever it was uh big gi joe dolls uh the whole gi joe versus cobra thing didn't start until the 80s revival in 1983 so like 20 years later but uh it also has a dvd rom i think it's just a pdf or a text file i, I guess it's a pdf of the uh uh script for Jungle Trap, which is just one of the episodes. And that's actually the only printable script on the whole thing. In Transformers, they actually had rehearsal scripts for the entire series, as well as some other scripts as well. So it's unfortunate they didn't get more of those for G.I. Joe. Uh, then we've got seven of the Knowing is Half the Battle PSAs and archival Hasbro toy commercials. Specifically, we've got three on there, so three of the earlier ones. It's pretty cool. And then here, uh, let's see, on disc eight... More bonus features. We've got uh, a fairly lengthy featurette, Everyday Heroes, the history of G.I. Joe. So you get a, a nice nice history retrospective there. Uh, seven more, Knowing is Half the Battle PSAs, and seven more toy commercials. And that's basically all that's on there. And then uh, here uh, we've got Disc 9, which has episodes 44 through 50. And there we go. So that is it for that. Oh, I should show you the back as well. we got Snake Eyes on there as well as some random screens from the uh, episodes. So then, discs 10 through 17, we got the good old Cobra Temple there, and as you may expect, the discs here feature members of that good old terrorist organization determined to rule the world. So we got uh, disc 10, we have episodes uh, 51 through 57, disc 11, we got 58 through 65. That actually takes us up to the end of season one. In the disc 12, we have more bonus features. Uh, we have Men and Women of Action creating the G.I. Joe animated series. That's a pretty extensive featurette. Then we have something that's actually exclusive to this set. Finally, some exclusive extras. And this is a big one. We have Voices of a Real American Hero, which is about a half an hour panel with several of the original voice actors from the show reminiscing about their time working on it. It's much the same as the uh, the one on the Transformers Matrix set. Uh, a lot of the same actors involved, but uh, some different ones as well. And it's just a delight. It is absolutely a wonderful, wonderful featurette and one of my favorite features on the set, actually. And we have seven more Knowing is Half the Battle PSAs and then eight more toy commercials. There's quite a collection of toy commercials on here, which is cool because G.I. Joe always had cool uh, toy commercials. I should mention, much like the Transformers set, the toy commercials all have the faces of the kids blurred out for, uh, I guess, you know, rights reasons or whatever. Okay, and then we have Disc 13, which has episodes 66 through 73. So that includes the uh, Arise Serpentor Arise miniseries and the first few regular episodes. And then we have Disc 14, which is episodes 74 through 80. Disc 15, which is episodes 81 through, is it 88? Sorry, it's hard to read upside down with my glasses, which are desperately needed being replaced. There we go. Here we have Disc 16, which is episodes 89 through 95. And that takes us to the end of the series. And then we have the last disc of bonus features. And the last disc of bonus bonus features, we have Green Shirts, the G.I. Joe Legacy, which is largely about G.I. Joe fandom over the years. And then we have another exclusive extra, and this is another really, really good one, especially for G.I. Joe fans. I mean, this is a big deal. We have Declassified, a conversation with Larry Hama. Yes. Larry Hama, of course, longtime writer of the G.I. Joe comics. He also wrote the, you know, the info files and gave character names. He was basically the Bob Budiansky of the G.I. Joe world, just as Bob Budiansky was responsible for naming most of the original Transformers characters and doing the tech specs. Larry Hama did the same thing for G.I. Joe. He named most of the characters and also did the, uh, the info files for them on the toys and also uh, of course is most well known for his exemplary work writing the comics over the years um, so that's a pretty cool extra to have on here and it's not on the regular sets um, then we have a fan film entitled gi joe battle for the serpent stone um, i don't know if i've ever actually watched the fan film i was never particularly interested in that but anyway cool little bonus and that's exclusive to this set as well 
And then we have the final six, knowing is half the battle PSAs, and seven more archival Hasbro toy commercials. I should mention, one of those toy commercials is one of the ones that I contributed. Yay! Yeah, I recorded a lot of stuff uh, back in the 80s on SP VHS, no less. So uh, I was more than happy to make transfers of those for Shout Factory to include. Now, of all the G.I. Joe stuff I sent them, I had a few commercials and commercial fragments. Um, it seems like they, they only used that one. Um, specifically, the one that I contributed was the ad for the Maggot and Persuader. And uh, there you go. So that's from my collection, if you were wondering. And this is why it's the same size, because they included a slot here to put in G.I. Joe the movie. At the time, they hadn't announced that they were releasing it, but this was kind of, this was meant to be a hint that it was coming from Shout Factory. Some people thought maybe that they'd been gypped a disc. I don't know. Anyway, Shout Factory did, of course, eventually release the movie, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So, and then looking at the back here, of course, I have Cobra Commander and some more random shots. This is, of course, villain-oriented shots. And there we go. So, once again, side by side, I like that. And just give you a brief extra look there. Ain't it pretty? And there we go. So, next up, of course, we have the booklet, which is also exclusive to the Foot Locker set. And much like the Transformers one, this is a, a very, very slick book. We've got an intro by Seth Green, of all things. Um, pretty sure he wasn't involved in the show, but kind of reminiscing about his fandom there. So we have, uh, again, more... Uh, all these character profiles, by the way, are from the original uh, package art of the toys. Very, uh, very cool indeed. Uh, so that, Revenge of Cobra. So, once again, just nice little story summaries. Lots of uh, cool artwork and stuff like that. Actually, I, I really like the, uh, the package art here that they used for it. Um, really nice, uh, nice paintings. I always really like the Transformers ones too. Just uh, terrific package art in the 80s, man. I gotta tell you, you know, I know very few toys for which I didn't love the package art. So basically you have a disc by disc, episode by episode breakdown. I don't know that there's much in the way of trivia here. I know the Transformers set was definitely lacking in, tri in trivia as well, but um, very cool. Yeah, here we are. Here's that Worlds Without End, episodes 46 and 47, which was volume one of the Rhino VHS tapes. Go figure. Um, I should mention also the Rhino DVDs, they never actually completed the series. They got as far as, uh, I think, season one, part two, and then they never released season two. Um, Rhino took their sweet time releasing uh, their Hasbro licenses on DVD, and as a result, the, the license that they had actually expired before they were able to finish releasing them. So enter Shout Factory, picking up the ball that Rhino dropped, not only fixing all the problems with the uh, you know Transformers sets, but also completing the sets of uh, G.I. Joe and, of course, Jim as well. So pretty cool. So anybody who poops on Shout Factory for not completing things, hey, they, they, they completed what Rhino didn't. So there we go. And I just wanted to show you... A little something here. Recognize that guy? Yeah, I, I think I know that guy. <laughs> yes, much like the Transformers set, I got a mention under special thanks. And yes, I know I have to clip my nails. <laughs> Ah, and that is it for the Foot Locker set. Overall, uh, an absolutely gorgeous set. In terms of picture and sound quality, honestly, I think it looks fantastic. It's uh, definitely comparable to the um, to the Transformers set. Now, some fans have complained that a few episodes have some tape glitches in them. And you know what? Yeah, and so what? The tapes were like 25 years old at the time that this was done. What do you expect? Absolute perfection? There's bound to be a few dropouts with tapes that old. Uh, now, some fans argued, well, there were er earlier DVD releases that didn't have those glitches. Yeah, and those earlier DVD releases came like 10 years prior, and those glitches probably didn't exist on the Masters at the time. Now, they're not going to use old DVD Masters from 10 years ago to do new DVDs. No, they're going to make new DVD masters from new transfers of the master of the, you know the original one inch broadcast masters. Now as for the sources, I I know with Transformers they had a lot of film sources and such. I don't know if that was the case with GI Joe. Honestly, I couldn't find any information about it. Nobody actually seems to know for certain. Um, so I don't know if they were working from work prints or film prints. Um, I suspect just one inch broadcast master tapes 
because um, you know those glitches wouldn't be present otherwise, and they were the masters that Hasbro sent them. Yeah, so I mean, great. Earlier DVD releases of some of those episodes didn't have the glitches. Well, these ones do, and you know what? They're nothing to cry about. They're not that major. I didn't even freaking notice them half the time. So get your head out of your ass, fans. Come on, just try to show a little appreciation for what we have. G.I. Joe the Movie on Blu-ray. There was a big kerfuffle when they were announcing this because they were uh, only going to release it in widescreen. Now, of course, the previous VHS and DVD releases were full frame. I don't want to say full screen, but rather they were full frame. The movie was shot originally in 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. I guess technically 1.37 to 1 because that's the actual aspect ratio of 35 millimeter film. Um, and then the intent was to crop the image for theatrical presentation so to chop off the top and bottom to uh you know fit the widescreen aspect ratio so the whole thing was done in in full frame but in a widescreen safe format i mean it was intended to be cropped however all of the releases we'd had previously were full frame so you know great it'd be cool to see it in widescreen finally but we're not gaining anything from it and all over the years we've had it in full frame the whole time so why not include both you know, much like the various Transformers releases over the years have done. So, not to toot my own horn too much, but I was one of the more vocal fans on this subject, on the Shout Factory message board, and uh, in the end, they did actually decide to release both. Now, with one small caveat, the full-frame version is only available on the DVD, not on the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray is strictly the widescreen version, the DVD has both. So, hey, it's better than nothing. And I gotta say, honestly, the Blu-ray transfer looks fantastic. So here, of course, is an ad for the uh, Foot Locker set and the uh, Transformers Matrix set. And then these are all the individual season set releases. So if you wanted to look at them, there they are. <laughs> let me get a let me get a better close-up for you. There we go. So in addition to the complete series sets, they were of course released in four individual volumes each. And then there were also complete series sets, which were released, which were basically just repackages of the contents from these. The only way to get the exclusive extras is to have the Matrix set for Transformers and the Foot Locker set for G.I. Joe. So I'll just set this aside for the moment. Okay, so here essentially we have G.I. Joe the movie, the animated movie, uh, in high def for the first time. And... Uh, as I say, I mean, uh, uh, e even though the cropping kind of annoys me, I understand that it is technically correct and the way it would have appeared in theaters. So there's really only a couple of spots where it kind of bugs me. For the most part, it actually looks really good. And in terms of the transfer quality, it looks freaking fantastic. It's beautiful. I mean, I, I keep hoping that Shout Factory will somehow finagle getting the rights to the Transformers movie and give it the same deluxe treatment. But uh, so far, no dice. Anyway, so we've got it on Blu-ray and on DVD. So... My thinking is, take the DVD and slot it into that empty spot in the Foot Locker set, and then just keep the Blu-ray in the Blu-ray case. Or do as I have done and just keep them both together. I'm probably going to put this into the uh, DVD case anyway, just because. But uh, in terms of extras, let's just take a look at the back here. In terms of extras, what have we got? We have the feature film. We have an audio commentary with G.I. Joe writer and story consultant Buzz Dixon. I have to tell you, that is a great commentary track. Definitely listen to that if you're a G.I. Joe fan. It is loaded with information about the making of the film and just the uh, 80s franchise in general. Uh, public service announcements. Yes! Fans were quite annoyed to discover upon closer inspection that there were a few public service announcements on the G.I. Joe Foot Locker set that were actually missing. There were a few that they had missed. Uh, they were pretty exhaustive in trying to track them down, but they missed a few. The remaining PSAs are on this set. So if you have this and that, you got them all. So there you go. Pretty cool. And then we've got an art gallery, basically just some production art on there and then we have oh yeah on the b uh, yeah on the, on the dvd one extra thing we have dvd rom content you actually have a printable version of the screenplay how cool is that so pretty pretty nifty indeed wow this is long we're almost done i promise <laughs> well that's what i get for trying to do it all in one Okay, so then next up, of course, uh, after the Sunbow Marvel series was released, a lot of people were wondering, hey, what about the Deke series? Are you going to do the Deke series? What about the Deke series? Deke series, yes? Hello? 
Yes, they did the Deke series. I don't know. Some of you may not even be aware that they did this, but they did. And I got it. And I don't think I ever showed it in an update. So here it is. Ta-da! <laughs> so the Deke series was uh, two seasons. Well, duh. Two seasons, 44 episodes total. Um, slightly different animation style. Obviously, it's a different studio. They have a different style. There are a few of the same voice actors who carry over. Like, they actually did get Chris Latta to do the voice of Cobra Commander, which is pretty cool. And there's one or two other voices. I think Sergeant Slaughter is in it from time to time, and it's obviously Sergeant Slaughter as Sergeant Slaughter. Other than that, uh, for the most part, it's new characters. There are a few recurring characters, but with different voice actors. Some fans of the old show found that really annoying and uh, did not care for it, so... Oh well, it is what it is. Now in terms of extras here, we have nothing. This is a uh, completely bare bones set. They basically just rushed it out. Nothing spectacular. And, uh, and here once again we have a badly trimmed insert that doesn't actually fit properly. But we have you know ads for all the G.I. Joe stuff, all the Transformers stuff. Interestingly enough, ad for the Foot Logger set, but not the Matrix set, go figure. Conan, which was just coming out, yeah, so you got Mask, the complete series, and then they were also going to split it up into a couple volumes. Why? I don't know. And then here we got Transformers Prime, just coming out, actually. They hadn't even done all of it. And then, of course, uh, a couple ads for Beast Wars there. So, very cool stuff. Anyway, so here we've got Operation Dragonfire on the first disc. This continues on directly from the movie. And then from there, it goes on to kind of its own direction. Some fans really don't like this series. Other fans love it. I know some fans who actually like this better than the Marvel series, so go figure. I've only seen maybe half of them, and I thought it was okay. You know, I, I still prefer the Sun the Marvel Sunbow series, but um, I like this fine, and I don't know why some fans are so down on it. But here we go. So we have uh, disc contents listed on the inside of the DVD case, and that's it. There has not been a complete series set released of this, and there probably won't be. Because I know this doesn't have anywhere near the same size of audience as the um, as the other uh, show, including Operation Dragonfire. There's 24 episodes here, so you got the five-part miniseries and then 19 regular episodes. That makes up season one, and season two is 20 episodes for a total of 44. So kind of an odd number of episodes. But anyway, so we got season two here, wrapping it all up. This is essentially the end of the 80s and 90s era, right here, folks. And once again, disc by disc breakdowns there. And in this case, oh, in this case, it's actually only three discs. And there you go. So just take a look there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, let's put the let's put the contents under the hub where it's really easy to read. God damn it. Oh, and there's some bonus features on here. Uh, retrospective featurette with the Hasbro toy team. There you go. So we got an extra. <laughs> Was there was there anything on here? No, there's nothing. There is nothing on the other set at all. Yeah, so there you go. So that is the complete Deke series right there in all its glory. Love it or hate it, get it or don't. I wanted to get it because I hadn't really seen it before. I'd heard about it, but I'd never, never seen it. So very cool. Oh, and let's put this badly cut thing in here. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Anyway, last but not least, G.I. Joe Resolute, the spiritual successor to the 80s and 90s series, featuring a lot of the same characters, all different voice casts, none of the original voice cast returns, but, uh, and, you know, boring Paramount. I think this isn't a Shout Factor release, hence the lack of presentation, but uh, I got it for $5, so I can't really complain. Really good. Definitely not your daddy's G.I. Joe. This is brutal, violent, and unflinching in its depiction of said brutal violence. But it's really good. I mean, I, I actually really enjoyed it a lot, and I wish they had done... I wish this had become a regular series, like an HBO series or something. I don't know. Like, that'll ever happen. But it was pretty cool. Holy guacamole. That went on really long. <laughs> well, thank you very much for those of you who stuck around. Um, well, what can I say? Sometimes I just want to cram it all into one massive video. I guess I could have split this up into like 18 parts, but eh, why bother? I got other stuff to talk about, so let's just do it all in one epic video. So that is the G.I. Joe collection. I guess the only other things to go into are this is the complete series set without the Foot Locker extras. But, um, 
otherwise yeah that's it and then of course there's the four volumes which we saw pictures of all over the place so i don't need to show you those again um yeah the complete series set that i just showed you is the just a repackage of the four season sets um yeah if you can get it the Foot Locker set is definitely the one to own uh especially for those two uh exclusive featurettes the voice actor uh, discussion and the uh interview with larry hama that's pretty awesome stuff to have so um yeah definitely gets my vote i don't know what else i can say i think i've covered everything all righty uh quick word of thanks to my patreon sponsors big thanks to kyle pellegree my current highest level sponsor and a big thanks to everybody else as well uh who you'll see in just a few moments um please do consider joining the patreon party it's uh you know it's definitely helping to make a lot of things possible here on the multimedia chronicles and i certainly do appreciate the support no amount is too big no amount is too small so big thanks to everybody who has jumped in to uh, sponsor the show i really appreciate that Alrighty, that is definitely it from me to you for now so until next time at ease disease and sayonara The first ever Multimedia Chronicles episode filmed in 60 frames per second. Woo! Woo! Awesome! All right. Excellent. Here we go. Greetings, soldiers. At ease. Today, on a closer look for this week. Blah, 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 fuck. At ease, disease. Yeah. At ease, disease. Now, fuck that. I can't do Sergeant Slaughter to save my life. What situation would you need to be in for which doing a Sergeant Slaughter impression would save your life? Greetings, soldiers. Ah, I should salute. I'll do a salute. Greetings, soldiers. At ease. Oh, well, today. Oh, well. Fucking hell. Okay, I'm going to get in the groove. Greetings, soldiers. At ease. Well, today, on this week's Closer Look, we're going to take a look at G.I. Joe, specifically the Marvel Sunbow and Deke series as they've appeared on DVD, or more specifically, how they appear in my collection. Uh, <clears throat> fuck. Uh. <clears throat> well, six minutes of audio recorded so far, and nothing... Actually usable. Excellent. Greeting soldiers at ease. Well, on this week's Closer Look, we're going to take a look at G.I. Joe. Specifically, a little something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Namely, a closer look at the G.I. Joe Foot Locker set. And uh, in addition to that, we're going to take a look at the Blu-ray release of the, um, the movie. And just a bunch of fucking awesome stuff. So, yeah. That's interesting. I'm seeing them forwards. Why am I seeing them forwards? That's just weird. I'm looking in the... Like, you're seeing them backwards, but I'm seeing them in the display on the camera forwards. The hell? Why is it forwards? I'm so confused. Anyway, uh, nothing on the back. It's basically iron-on... Uh, iron-on tattoos. Yeah, that makes sense. Greetings, soldiers. At ease. Well, on this week's Closer Look, we're going to be taking a little look at something I've been wanting to uh, do a little look and fucking look at it and stuff. God damn. What is wrong with me today?